Our next speaker is Dr. Padma Rekha Jirge from Kolhapur. She is the scientific director of the Shushru TRT Clinic and the Shreyas Hospital Kolhapur. She has completed her clinical research fellowship in ART from the University of Glasgow. She is the chairperson of the special interest group on clinical research in the Indian Society of Assisted Reproduction and a reviewer for the journal Fertility Sterility. Her current research interests are ovarian reserve in Indian infertile women in genital cox and infertility. She is going to talk about complications of fetal reduction. Good morning, Padma. For yet again bringing another um, very least often discussed topic to the forefront in this uh, Congress on uh, complications of ART and asking me to speak on complications of fetal reduction. Um, as an IVF specialist, once we get a positive pregnancy test, we are very, very happy that we have given what the couple came to us for. And two, approximately two weeks later, when we do the first ultrasound scan, looking at something like this, sort of, you know, comes, as a, uh, comes with a very defeated uh, feeling. And uh, we almost accept that, okay, you know, like she has a higher order multiple pregnancy and uh, weighing the pros and cons, um, let us just accept that she does require fetal reduction and advise her accordingly. Also, you know, the literature, there is a very, very um, little amount of data, about 59 citations in the PubMed regarding the complications or after effect of uh, fetal reduction, which is very surprising and amounting only to about 250 fetal reductions. I'm sure, you know, despite the number of fetal reductions being done all over the world, there is very, very little reporting done regarding this uh, matter. And of course, this became necessary, this procedure became necessary because if you look at the neonatal mortality uh, rate, 9.7 per 10,000 live births for singletons compared to 138 uh, uh, per 1,000 uh, live births for triplets. So fetal reduction techniques have emerged as a very effective medical approach to improve medical uh, uh, pregnancy outcome and a very key option for patients trying to carry a pregnancy to term. Now let us just see what methods have been used uh, uh, for fetal, selective fetal reduction and how it fares in comparison to no fetal reduction. The first and foremost, uh, the first uh, methodology used was trans-cervical aspiration, which has almost been uh, given up uh, now. I have never seen one of these procedures being done. And then came the transvaginal reduction with uh, potassium chloride injection or just repeated uh, puncturing of the fetal uh, cardia until asystole was achieved. Most widely used procedure now is uh, transabdominal reduction with uh, potassium uh, chloride injection. And in monozygotic uh, twins, transabdominal radiofrequency ablation done for a very specific uh, purpose. Now, when we compare higher order multiples and the complications thereof, uh, such as higher incidence of miscarriages, preterm labor, IUGR, low birth weight, and higher incidence of maternal complications, we have to balance this with the complications associated with the selective fetal reduction, such as uh, uh, preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes, chorioamnionitis, miscarriages, and preterm delivery. Now the, one of the very first studies uh, looking at this uh, compared the trans-cervical approach to transvaginal approach, and 14 of trans-cervical aspiration compared with 19 transvaginal uh, fetal reduction, a higher incidence of miscarriages and late fetal losses with the transcervical approach, as expected, because when we do anything transcervically, there is a higher incidence of huge amount of prostaglandins being uh, released and leading to untoward uh, pregnancy complications. And this paper concluded that transcervical aspiration should not be done. Coming to transvaginal fetal reduction, usually done using the ovum pickup uh, needle of various uh, gauges, the finer the uh, better, and a small amount of KCL is injected into the fetal cardiac thoracic cavity. Or another procedure where transvaginal cardiac puncture is done. This is not a very frequently used uh, methodology, but uh, there is a paper looking at about uh, 149 
multifetal pregnancies, tri triplets, and higher order multiples reduced to twins. About 7.3% of uh, miscarriages and 1.3% of chorioamnionitis uh, were reported in this particular uh, series with a very good take-home baby rate of about 90% with the twins and a slightly re reduced take-home baby rate when they were reduced to uh, singletons. Now coming to the trans-abdominal fetal reduction, this is what we most, uh, mo mo most of us are uh, used to or uh, acquainted with where uh, trans-abdominally the uh, fetus at the uh, m closest to the fundus is identified and trying to avoid the placenta, a fine needle, usually 20 gauge is uh, what is reported, but more and more operators are using finer gauge needles as uh, ultrasound resolution has got better and we've got better quality uh, machines. And a very small amount of potassium, diluted potassium chloride injection is um, introduced. Uh, Initial procedures involved introducing it to the umbilical cord, and now it is directly into the thoracic cavity, and asystole, cardiac asystole is confirmed. One of the very first papers comparing the transvaginal and transabdominal uh, uh, procedures looked at 10 women where transabdominal procedure was done and 10 transvaginal approach was done. And in this, in fact, they found transvaginal approach was better and associated with a lesser miscarriage uh, rate uh, of about 10% compared to 40% with transabdominal approach. Soon more papers came comparing the two procedures and uh, most of them concluded that transabdominal procedures were better, of, uh, were better than the, and safer than the transvaginal procedure and almost the uh, miscarriage ra rates were halved. And the pregnancies were carried nearer to the term more pregnancies were carried nearer to the term in the transabdominal uh, procedure. And then the question arose, re uh, really, is it necessary? Are we giving them any better advantage apart from reducing the number of fetuses uh, as far as uh, safety of the pregnancies are concerned? So reduction versus uh, non-reduction. 80 uh, women with triplet pregnancies were divided into two groups. Group one consisted of uh, women who decided to continue with their pregnancies without reduction, and 32 women who chose to uh, reduce the pregnancy uh, to twin pregnancies, and this was done transabdominally. And the results showed that prematurity was lower in the reduced pregnancies, 95.5% versus 53.5% in those who did not reduce. Birth weight was better, and perinatal mortality was non-significantly improved in the group which opted for fetal reduction. Again, another study looking at, um, uh, look, uh, looking at it, it was a retrospective uh, study, looking at a group of triplet pregnancies, and 15, uh, that is 54 triplet pregnancies, 59 twin pregnancies resulting from multifetal pregnancy reduction, and 88 sets of uh, twins conceived with uh, treatment. So it compared triplets reduced uh, multifetal pregnancies and a set of uh, twins. And twins remaining either after reduction, fetal reduction, or without any reduction, they were less likely to have preeclampsia compared to those who continued, as, continued with triplet pregnancies and were less likely to be delivered before 36 weeks of uh, pregnancy. And the fetal weights were comparatively higher compared to the triplet pregnancies. Now, this is the largest and most recent study looking at uh, uh, fetal reduction and its uh, beneficial or uh, uh, its subsequent effect on the pregnancy outcome. A series of trichorionic triamniotic triplets, 214, 59 of them opted for uh, continuation as triplet pregnancy. There was spontaneous reduction to uh, twin pregnancies in 30, 30 of them. And the remaining ones opted for selective uh, reduction. And there was a fourfold increase in delivery beyond 34 weeks in those where there was a spontaneous reduction or a selective uh, reduction performed to twins. There's been no uh, study uh, really looking in great detail as far as uh, postnatal follow-up is concerned. There's only a very small study which looked at three women delivering six babies after reducing triplets and higher order multiples, and there was no difference uh, in the uh, neonatal outcome. 
compared to pregnancies where there was no reduction done. Uh, and this continued. The neurocognitive measures were all similar, uh, even at 12.5 and 38 months of age. Our own data is very, very small. Uh, 14 triplet pregnancies out of 352 ART pregnancies. Uh, one insisted on continuing as uh, triplet because of religious reasons, and she was electively delivered at 36 weeks because of uh, severe PIH. Selective transvaginal reduction. This was one of the very first ones that was uh, done, and this ended as a complete miscarriage. Since then, all of the remaining ones have undergone transabdominal uh, reduction. No incidence of chorioamnionitis, two second trimester pregnancy loss, and all others have continued into third trimester and delivered around 36 to 37 weeks as twins. Now, there is a special situation with uh, monochorionic uh, twins where uh, this procedure cannot be used because of the uh, special kind of vasculature that is shared between the twins. And if there is any complication arising in one of the twins in this uh, special circumstance, either laser or uh, radio frequency ablation has been used. And there have been three studies published uh, showing uh, benefit of this procedure. <coughs> the largest one including 80 cases, um, which showed a 9, uh, which showed a 10% uh, incidence of intrauterine fetal death, either immediately or a delayed uh, result, and preterm uh, pre prelabor rupture of membranes before 25 weeks um, in about five uh, of these uh, women. And this is something which is which has been uh, tried only in this uh, mon set of monochorionic twins, where one of the fetuses is either abnormal or is showing evidence of twin to twin uh, transfusion. So in a set of uh, trichorionic, triamniotic uh, triplet pregnancies, we can summarize and say that complication of fetal reduction is in the form of miscarriage in about 7 to 8%, chorioamnionitis in about 1 to 2%, and preterm delivery less than 36 weeks in up to 40%, and very rarely vanishing uh, fetus. All available data for, uh, is for triplets and higher order multiples. No data for twins electively reduced to singleton. Um, reduction offers better neonatal outcome and maternal outcome, but it requires stringent aseptic precaution while performing the procedure and an expert operator. And I would like to conclude by saying that prevention of high order multiples should be the priority and not dealing with it once we achieve it. And counseling of these women with the available data is very essential. Transabdominal reduction with KCL injection in late first trimester is what most, is most widely used now with the availability of the first trimester nuchal uh, scan and reliability of this uh, particular modality of uh, fetal assessment. Procedure with stringent precautions and by an expert operator to minimize immediate complications. Role of prophylactic uh, progesterone subsequently or cervical encyclage in this subset of women has not been evaluated. Um, it does definitely offer better outcome uh, than triplet pregnancies without reduction. However, it's not without complications. Thank you. Thank you, Padma. Thank you for a very nice lecture.